السلام علیکم ورحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ ان شاء اللہ وی گوئنگ ٹو اسٹارٹ آور درس القرآن فار ٹوڈے ٹوڈے از درس القرآن ول بی فرام چاپٹر نمبر الیون آف دا ہولی قرآن سورہ ہود ورس نمبر ون او سکس ٹو ورس نمبر ون او نائن سو فور ورسز آف دا ہولی قرآن ول کور ان شاء اللہ فرام سورہ ہود ورس نمبر ون او سکس شاکی <coughs> مری The translation of these verses is as follows. Allah Ta'ala says, The day it comes, no soul shall speak except by his permission. Then some of them will prove unfortunate and others fortunate. فرمایا جس دن وہ آ جائے گا تو کوئی جان بھی اس کے اذن کے بغیر کلام نہ کر سکے گی پس ان میں سے بدبخت بھی ہیں اور خوش نصیب بھی As for, those, as for those who will prove unfortunate, they shall be in the fire wherein, they shall, wherein, wherein there shall be for them sighing and sobbing. پس وہ لوگ جو بدوقت ہوئے تو وہ آگ میں ہوں گے اس میں ان کے لیے چلانا اور چیخنا ہے Abiding therein so long as the heavens and the earth endure, Accepting what thy Lord may will, surely thy Lord does bring about what he pleases. وہ اس میں رہنے والے ہیں جب تک کہ آسمان اور زمین باقی ہیں سوائے اس کے جو تیرا رب چاہے یقیناً تیرا رب جس چیز کا ارادہ کرے اسے ضرور کر کے رہتا ہے But as for those who will prove fortunate, They shall be in heaven, abiding therein so long as the heavens and the earth endure, except what your Lord may will, a gift that shall not be cut off. Or wo log jo khush naseeb banai gaye, to wo jannat mein honge, wo us mein rehne wale hain, jab tak ke aasman aur zameen baqi hain, sawai iske jo tera rab chahe, ye ek na kaati jane wali saza ke, یہ ایک نہ کاٹی جانے والی جزا کے طور پر ہوگا سو لکنگ ایٹ فرام دا تفسیر آف حضرت مسلم ماؤد رضی اللہ عنہ حضرت مسلم ماؤد رضی اللہ عنہ ہی ہیز ایکسپلین ان تفسیر کبیر دیٹ ان دیز ورسز آف دا ہولی قرآن اللہ تعالیٰ از پریزینٹنگ دا سناریو آف دی ہیئر آفٹر دا ڈے آف ججمنٹ وین ایوری ون وڈ بی اکاؤنٹیڈ for his or her deeds. As we know that in the religion of Islam, belief in the hereafter is one of the articles of faith. And uh, if when we read the Holy Quran, we see that repeatedly, again and again, Allah Ta'ala has mentioned the concept of uh, the hereafter and what this means and, and how every person, uh, every person, uh, will be judged according to his or her deeds in this world and they will be rewarded in the hereafter or they will be punished in the hereafter. So in these verses of the Holy Quran, Allah Ta'ala is uh, painting the picture of the hellfire and the heaven 
and Allah Ta'ala has um, mentioned the, the nature of the hellfire or how long it will be and similarly the nature of the heaven or the paradise and how long it will be for those people who will abide therein. As a Muslim, he says that first of all, Allah Ta'ala says, uh, as we see that in this, uh, in the in the verses of the Holy Quran, in uh, in verse number 106, Allah Ta'ala says that on that day, no soul shall speak except by the permission of God. That the day that it will come, that is, the day of the day, no soul will not be able to speak without Allah Ta'ala's permission. So, as a Muslim, he says that, First of all, Allah Ta'ala says that on, on that day, no one will speak except by the permission of Allah Ta'ala. He says that uh, this means that due to the awe and the grandeur and the, uh, and the glory and, mighty of, and the might of God, no one will try to make any excuse on the day of judgment, meaning that when people will be held accountable uh, for their deeds, uh, no one will try to make any excuse or uh, try to present excuses for his or her actions. He says that, as Hazur gives an example, that unlike the courts of this world, where people present different excuses to try to defend themselves, no one will do so on the Day of Judgment. So in the Holy Quran, Allah Ta'ala has give, uh, Hazur, explains, Hazur explains an example that uh, to to understand this verse of the Holy Quran, he gives an example of the worldly courts. For example, if somebody does something wrong and he he's presented in front of a judge in this world, sometimes what he tries to do is uh, he tries to present an excuse for whatever crime he has committed, uh, and he thinks that uh, you know if he's able to uh, trick the the judge in one way or another. He might be, uh, he might get off, and he might not be punished or uh, for whatever crime he had committed. But about the hereafter, Allah Taala says, when when Allah Taala says in the Holy Quran that no one will speak except by the permission of God, as a Muslim author who says that this means that on that day, uh, people will not try to make any excuse. People will not try to, uh, you know, present any reason. Uh, they will not try to justify their wrong deeds in any way because of the awe and the grandeur and the glory and the might of God in front of them uh, no one will dare make any excuses in the court of Allah Ta'ala then uh, in the Holy Quran then Allah Ta'ala says فَمِنْ هُمْ شَكِيُّمْ وَسَعِيدٌ that on that day some people will prove to be unfortunate and other people will prove to be fortunate so Allah Ta'ala says that some, uh, when people will be accounted for their deeds, some of them will be declared shakiyun, which means uh, a simple translation of shaki is unfortunate, and other people will be sa'id, which means fortunate, meaning that some people will be, will be deemed unfortunate, while others will be declared fortunate. This means that based on our deeds and our actions and whatever we have done in this world, people will be declared People will be declared, people will be judged either shaki, meaning deserving of punishment, or declared saeed, meaning deserving of reward, deserving of um, deserving of a good, uh, good reward from Allah Ta'ala. So uh, Allah Ta'ala in this verse, he has explained that once the uh, once people have been accounted for for their deeds in this world there will be two categories of people. For those people whose, um, whose good actions will be more than their, their bad actions, meaning that uh, those such people will, be, will become deserving of uh, the paradise or they will become deserving of receiving reward from God. And for such people, Allah Ta'ala says that they will be Saeed, meaning that they will be fortunate. Similarly, uh, on the other hand, those people who, uh, whose wrong actions outweigh their good actions, meaning that their wrong actions are more than their good actions, and they do not attract the mercy of God, 
uh, then for such people allah taala say allah taala says that they will be declared shakiyun or unfortunate and this means that they will become worthy of punishment they will uh, have to pay for their actions in this world then in the next verse of the holy quran allah taala says fa ammal ladina shaku fafi nari lahum fiha zafirun wa shahik that those people who will uh, prove to be unfortunate they shall be in 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 the fire wherein wherein they shall cry and they sh- they shall sob because of the punishment that is inflicted upon them so allah taala says in this verse that those people who would be declared shakiyun or unfortunate or those whose wrong deeds outweigh their good deeds such people will be thrown in hell fire wherein they shall cry and they shall sob and they shall shout out due to the punishment inflicted upon them meaning that such people who have been declared whose bad deeds outweigh their good deeds and who have been declared by allah taala as deserving of punishment about such people allah taala says that they will be thrown in in the hell fire wherein they shall be punished for their crimes now many people uh, many non muslims or many critics of islam uh, often uh, we i see that uh, one of the objections that they raise about the holy quran is how the holy quran depicts the hell fire or how the holy quran depicts jahannam meaning that they say that why is it that why is it that uh, people will be punished so severely uh for their crimes or 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 they 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 object to how uh um how in uh, jahannam or hellfire has been portrayed in such strong words in the holy quran so about this we should remember that uh, no one knows exactly about the punishment of the hereafter or the blessings of paradise the holy quran has given us examples according to our own understanding according to what we as human beings can comprehend if we imagine for example if right now we imagine being in fire it is an extremely painful scenario for us it is a trauma it is a traumatic experience hence we have been reminded that this is how severe the punishment for our wrong deeds would be so basically uh, you know when we read the holy quran in another verse of the holy quran allah taala says that no soul or no person knows what allah taala has prepared for him or her in the hereafter in a hadith the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that about the blessings of the of the hereafter there are such that no uh, no heart has felt it no eye has seen it no ear has heard about it basically saying that uh, from in the holy quran and from the ahadith of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam what we find out about the hereafter is that whether it is the the punishment of the hellfire or it or they are the rewards of the paradise about both of them we can say that we do no one knows exactly as human beings we do not know exactly what those things would be but whatever has been explained in the holy quran uh, whether it is about the hellfire or it is about the paradise uh, it has been explained in the form of examples or parables uh, parables according to our own understanding according to our own comprehension meaning that human beings as human beings in this world we can comprehend we can understand how painful it would be for a person to be literally in fire and this is why this example has been mentioned in the holy quran that uh, the punishment of the of the hereafter would be so severe that it would uh, that for us to give an example to us it has been mentioned that it would be as if a person is in the hell is literally in the fire so so all so repeatedly when we read the holy quran we find uh, descriptions of the hell fire and descriptions of the paradise 
uh, these are not to be taken literally because these have been given as examples and uh, uh, as examples and as descriptions according to what we as human beings can imagine or as human beings can understand then in the next verse of the holy quran allah taala says that khalidina fiha ma damat is samawat wal arz illa ma sha rabbuk allah taala says that those pe- about those people who will be in the hellfire allah taala says that they will stay therein as long as the heavens and the earth are are intact except what your lord may will and allah taala says surely your lord does bring about what he pleases so allah taala god says that such people who would enter hell fire would stay there as long as the heavens and the earth are intact except what your lord may will surely he does whatever he wills essentially hazur explains that allah taala says that the punishment of the hell fire will be for a long period of time until your lord decides to bring it to an end so this has been explained in this verse of the holy quran and later on i will i will i will uh, explain this further in detail but essentially what allah taala has said in this verse of the holy quran about those people who will be in the hell fire allah taala has said that they will stay there in as long as allah taala will allah taala wills allah taala wants allah taala deems that uh, their punishment should be for this long and then after that allah taala will bring about their punishment to an end meaning that their stay in the hell fire or their um, the period of their punishment would come to an end then in the next verse allah taala speaks about those people who will be in the in the in the paradise who will be rewarded by allah taala uh, uh, the same words have been repeated about such people allah taala says that as for those people who will prove fortunate they shall be in heaven abiding there in so long as the heavens and the earth uh, are intact except what your lord may will a gift that shall not be cut off So in this uh, in the following verse in this verse of the Holy Quran Allah Taala talks about those people who will prove to be saeed or fortunate that these people shall be in heaven and they would stay there as long as the heavens and the earth are intact then Allah Taala says that paradise is a gift that shall not be cut off essentially God says that paradise is a never ending gift it will continue to last forever So basically, in this verse of the Holy Quran, Allah Taala then explains the condition of the paradise or the condition of uh, of Jannat. That, uh, uh, as it has been explained in the Holy Quran, that those people uh, who uh, who were, whose good deeds would be more than their bad deeds, and they would earn the forgiveness and mercy of Allah Taala. About such people, Allah Taala says that they will. be declared fortunate and they will enter the paradise and they will stay therein and at the end allah taala says that the paradise is a gift that shall not be cut off meaning that allah taala says that paradise is a never ending gift so if we if we were to examine these two verses meaning the verse before this and this verse of the holy quran we see a clear difference about hell fire and about paradise about hell fire allah taala says that it will stay intact for a long time about hell fire allah taala says that uh, the, uh, the the hell fire or jahannam will stay intact for a long time except what allah taala wants then he says that allah taala does whatever he wills in contrast opposite to that about paradise allah taala says that it will also stay intact uh, for a long time except what your lord wants and then he says it is a gift that will never end so allah about paradise allah taala uses the word that it is a gift that will never end meaning that it is a never ending uh, place and once people enter paradise they will continue to stay there in forever but he does not use these words for the hell fire for the hell fire he says that except what your lord may will surely he does whatever he pleases 
and from other verses of the Holy Quran, we can see that uh, we know that Allah Taala says that since His mercy overwhelms everything, we can we uh, we conclude, and I will I will uh, explain this later on that uh, that hellfire is not something that is permanent. Uh, 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 in contrast to paradise, which in reality, uh, as explained by the Holy Quran, is permanent. And one of the principles explained by the Promised Messiah, this is, uh, you know, the Promised Messiah, about the Promised Messiah, Islam, we believe that he came to this world, Allah Ta'ala raised him in this, uh, in this age for different purposes and for different uh, objectives. One of those objectives, one of those purposes of the coming of the Promised Messiah Islam, was to explain the true principles of Islam in this age and to rectify or do, to correct the mistakes of the Muslims or their wrong understanding or wrong interpretation of Quranic verses that might uh, that are prevalent among them. So this about hellfire and about paradise this is one of those things that have been explained by the Promised Messiah والسلام, in detail. And in, in fact, with, uh, with, uh, with Muslims, with non-Ahmadi Muslims, as well as with Christians, Ahmadis uh, have a different point of view on this point uh, from, me, uh, from Sunni and Shia Muslims, as well as the Christians. Because the, the Christians and the Sunnis uh, uh, whether they're the Christians or they're Muslims, uh, they believe that uh, those people who will be deserving of paradise, they will go to paradise and they will stay there in forever. But at the same time, they believe that uh, those people who will go to hellfire, uh, who will be punished by Allah Ta'ala, they also believe that they will stay there in forever. So basically, they believe that non ahmadi muslims and christians they both believe that hellfire is eternal and paradise is eternal but the promised messiah sallallahu based on the verses of the holy quran and the ahadith of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and based on some logical arguments he wrote and he presented this idea that in reality it is true that the Holy Quran says about paradise that it is a never-ending gift and it will stay forever. But he says that we cannot say the same about hellfire. And there are different verses of the Holy Quran, which I will mention, which based on that, the Promised Messiah والسلام, has explained that why is it that we believe that the, uh, that the, par- uh, the hellfire uh, is not permanent. Because... As I mentioned, that this is a difference that Ahmadis have from non-Ahmadi Muslims and from Christians. So, if we ever, uh, if we are ever in a discussion with non-Ahmadi Muslims or with Christians, and the concept of hellfire uh, comes up, uh, you know, it is important to know that why is it that our uh, itikad or our belief about hellfire is, is a little different from them. Because as I mentioned that both Christians and Muslims, non-Ahmadi Muslims, they believe that hellfire is something which is permanent, which will stay forever. Meaning that once people have been declared as unfortunate or as Allah Ta'ala says, shakiyun, once they have been declared as deserving of punishment, Christians and non-Ahmadi Muslims, they believe that they, they will stay in hellfire forever. But the Promised Messiah Islam, has presented a different point of view that eventually he has presented this point of view that yes, people will be punished for their crimes in the hereafter, for their sins in the hereafter. But eventually, uh, after being punished, uh, you know, after receiving their deserved punishment, uh, Allah Taala will take them out of the hellfire and they will also be put in the paradise. And the reason, the reasons that the Promised Messiah Sato Salam that he has presented is, I will mention uh, six of them. There is also others, some of them, uh, as a Muslim Maud who has explained under the commentary of these verses of the Holy Quran and the Promised Messiah Islam, has also explained them in uh, at different instances in his books. First argument is uh, these verses of the Holy Quran that are under discussion. As I mentioned that 
in these verses of the holy quran allah taala has mentioned both allah taala first mentions the hellfire and then he mentions that uh, he mentions paradise about hellfire allah taala says that the hellfire will stay for as long as uh, uh, as long as allah wills and uh, allah taala says that allah surely allah does whatever he pleases and then about paradise allah taala says the same words that it will stay for as long as allah wills and it says that uh, it is a never ending gift so this is the difference between the hellfire and the paradise that allah taala has explained here that he says uh, about hellfire he says that it will stay for as long as allah taala wants and then allah taala does whatever he pleases meaning that allah taala will br- bring it to an end but when com- when we compare it to paradise same words has have been repeated about paradise that it will also stay for as long as allah taala wills but then at the end allah taala says that paradise is a never ending gift and uh, the hellfire has been uh mentioned hundreds of times in the holy quran and same thing with paradise has been mentioned hundreds of times in the holy quran but nowhere about the hellfire allah taala has used the words that it is never ending uh but about paradise such words have been used repeatedly by god almighty then uh the second argument that the uh that has muslim maud radhi talan who has mentioned is from a hadith of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam there is a hadith of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that wherein he mentions that there will come a time upon hellfire there will come a time upon jahannam uh, when it would be empty and its doors would be swinging like a deserted house so for example sometimes we we see uh you know in tvs or in different uh stories or magazines for example houses that are deserted uh how uh you know the their houses their doors are wide open and with the air they uh, they close and they open again and again so similar picture has been painted by the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in a hadith where he says that uh there will come a time upon uh upon jahannam upon the hellfire he says that there will come a time when hellfire would be empty and its doors uh, would be swinging like a deserted house meaning that uh, the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has explained that uh, there indeed would come a time upon uh, upon jahannam when it would be empty there would be no one in it because once everyone has received uh, his or her punishment in the hellfire and that their their deserving punishment whatever they deserved according to whatever wrong deeds they had committed then out of the mercy of god allah taala will allah taala will make them enter the paradise and about about such time the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that the hellfire would become empty and he has given us this message that uh that that um uh, he uh, that after a while uh that hellfire would not be permanent and after receiving their due punishment from god almighty uh, eventually everybody would be taken out of the hellfire then there is a hadith in uh, in sahih bukhari and sahih muslim so this hadith is very authentic it has been explained in in the two most authentic books of the ahadith of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh where the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has said that eventually it's a long hadith but the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that eventually everyone with an uh, with even an iota of goodness will be taken to paradise then allah taala out of his out of his mercy will also take those people out of hellfire who had never done anything good in their lives so this is a long hadith in as i mentioned in sahih bukhari and sahih muslim basically uh, in this hadith allah taala uh, the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has painted the picture of the hereafter and the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam ha- has said that first those people will be taken to paradise who will be deserving of paradise 
and then after that uh, allah taala will give this uh, allah taala will tell the prophets that whoever they want to take out of the hellfire uh, they can take out of the hellfire and uh, and the prophets would uh, you know anybody who even has any goodness in their hearts uh, the prophets of god will take such people uh from the hellfire to the to the paradise and then after that uh, even the normal people uh you know in the uh, in the paradise allah taala will give them this authority that whoever they want to take out from the hellfire and bring them to the paradise they will be given this authority and then everybody uh you know people will will do that and in this way they will bring whoever they want from the from the hellfire uh, to the paradise then allah taala then the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that at this point any person who has even an iota of goodness in their hearts you know they would be uh, even if they had a lot of sins in their life uh, even if they had one good deed all of such people would be uh, uh, would would now be in paradise but at the, at the same time there will still be some people who will be in hellfire who have absolutely no goodness in their hearts and then the the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that then then allah out of his mercy will also take those people out of hellfire who had never done anything good in their lives so even if someone had never done anything good in in his or her life the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that even those people uh, in the end Allah Taala out of his mercy would would take such people and he would take them out of the hellfire and uh, make them enter paradise so essentially in this hadith of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he has explained that uh, he has explained that eventually uh, everybody whether uh, there are such people who have very little goodness in their hearts you know even those people uh who uh who sins are more than their their good deeds and they would be in hellfire but even if they have a little bit of goodness in their hearts allah taala uh, out of their out of his mercy will make them enter paradise and then after that he says that even those people who had never done anything good in their life even those people about such people the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that even they will be taken out of Uh, out of the hellfire and allah taala will make them enter the paradise then another uh, another verse of the holy quran uh, is allah taala says that wa ma khalaqtu al jinna wal insa illa liya'budun allah taala says that we have created human beings uh, for one purpose which is to worship me uh, you know allah taala says in the holy quran wa ma khalaqtu al jinna wal insa illa liya'budun that the the real purpose of the human beings is to is for them to worship me and the promised messiah allah satu waslam has made this point that if everyone does not eventually end up in, in heaven then this purpose is not uh, is not fulfilled so the allah taala says that in the holy quran allah taala says that the the reason for which i have created the human beings Uh, is for them to worship me but if a person uh, the promised messiah allah satu wasalam says that if a person in this world he does not worship allah taala and he continues to commit ba- uh, wrong deeds and then he dies and he passes away and he uh, he he enters hell fire and even there he does not worship allah taala because as he is being punished for his wrong deeds and if he stays in in the hell fire forever then in reality uh, the the statement of the holy quran does not come true because the statement of the holy quran is that everyone has been created for the worship of god so the the promised messiah allah satu waslam has concluded from this verse that this means that even those people who will be in the hell fire after they have received their des- uh, their deserved punishment their due punishment they will also be taken to paradise where in they will worship god almighty and this is and in this way this declaration in the holy quran that i have created 
uh, men and jinn uh, for one purpose, which is to worship me, uh, will come true. Otherwise, this verse of the Holy, if we believe that hellfire is also eternal, then this verse of the Holy Quran does not come true. This has been explained by the Promised Messiah. Then in another verse of the Holy Quran, Allah Ta'ala says, Rahmati wasiyat kulla shayin, that my mercy encompasses everything. He says that my mercy covers everything. So the Promised Messiah, Wasalam, again, he has made this point that Allah Ta'ala says in the Holy Quran that my mercy encompasses everything. My mercy will cover everything. My mercy covers everything. But if a person stays in hellfire forever and ever and ever, then the Promised Messiah Wasalam, says that the mercy of Allah Ta'ala does, uh, does, uh, does not encompass such person. Does not uh, the, uh, such a person does not come under the mercy of God. So he, he concludes from this verse of the Holy Quran that um, since Allah Ta'ala says that my mercy encompasses everything, this means that even those people who will be in the hellfire after receiving their due punishment, they will be taken to paradise as well. And in this way, Allah Ta'ala's mercy will, in, uh, will, in, uh, will in reality encompass everything, will cover everything. And every human being will, will, will gain benefit from the mercy of God. Another interesting point that the Promised Messiah Wasalam, has explained from this verse of the Holy Quran is that he says that in reality, if we see that, uh, you know, he says that if a person is going to stay in the hellfire forever and ever and ever, he says that if we think about it, in reality, the eventual, the eventually, God would be to blame for that. Because it is God who, who created that person. Uh, and then, you know, that person stayed in this world according to the system that, it was, that was made by God. And then he dies and, uh, you know, he, uh, Allah Ta'ala accounts him for his, for his deeds in this world. And if he, if he goes to hellfire according to the system made by God, and then forever and ever, if he, uh, if he, if, if he stays there, then the Promised Messiah Allah says that in reality, uh, we can say that it is God's fault that uh, you know uh, th this would be God's fault that this person and, and we would blame God that such this person is in the hellfire forever and ever. So he says that in reality, uh, you know, that we cannot logically accept that a person would be in the hellfire forever and ever because this would mean that this goes against the uh, this this verse of the Holy Quran that Allah Ta'ala's mercy covers everything and in order for that to happen it is it is mandatory that uh, after receiving his due punishment in the hellfire uh, a person goes to the heaven and it receives um, it receives this blessing of god then in another verse of the holy quran allah ta'ala says wa amma man khaffat mawazinuhu fa ummuhu haviya Allah Ta'ala says that uh, about such people whose, uh, whose uh, good deeds will turn out to be less on the scale, meaning that uh, wh whose good deeds uh, will, be, will, be less than their, uh, will be less than their wrong deeds, meaning that their good deeds will be less than their sins. Allah Ta'ala says, Fa ummuhu haviya, that his mother would be hellfire. So Allah Ta'ala says that for a person, as in this verse of the Holy Quran, Allah Ta'ala has explained that uh, when people, uh, when, uh, when people would, would be judged in the hereafter and, uh, and their, their actions would be accounted for, then about such people who, um, uh, about such people uh, who, whose action, whose good deeds would be less than their sins. Allah Ta'ala says that uh, his, his mother would be, uh, would be hellfire, which means that, as we know that, for example, and the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam has explained that uh, this means, uh, what does Allah mean by saying that his mother would be hellfire? This means that 
for example when a baby is born for 9 months uh, when a baby is being uh, you know the baby is not ready to yet come to this world it is prepared in the womb of the mother similarly the promised messiah as sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that everybody in the hell uh, everybody in the have in the hereafter uh, those people who would not be ready to enter paradise at that time meaning that because of their sins they would not be ready to enter the paradise allah taala says that <clears throat> allah taala says that the, uh, his or her mother would be hellfire meaning that such people would be kept in the hellfire until they are ready to meet uh, uh, to enter paradise so it would be like for example when a person is sick uh, he is kept in a hospital uh, for some time until he recovers and then he is able to go to the world similarly allah taala explains that in the in the hereafter a person uh, such people who will not be ready to enter paradise due to the sins that they have committed they will be kept in the hellfire for uh, a certain period of time and of course that period would be di- di- would be different for everyone they would be kept uh, in the hellfire for a certain period of time until they will become ready to enter paradise and then they all of them will enter paradise so these are the six arguments that uh, and there are also more arguments from the holy quran that the promised messiah as sattu waslam has given and hazrat muslim aur azlan ho has also mentioned under the under the commentary of these verses of the holy quran so the, these are the subject matters that have been explained in these uh, four verses of the holy quran uh, of surah hud uh, chapter number chapter number 11 of the holy quran surah hud from verse number 106 to 109 where allah taala has explained the condition or allah taala has talked about the hellfire and as well as the paradise and allah taala has explained the nature of the hellfire and of the paradise uh, that how uh, people uh, to wrap up uh, the subject matters that are explained in these verses of the holy quran allah taala says that on the day of judgment uh, there will be two categories of people some people will be uh, based on their actions some people will be declared unfortunate and they and they will be they will enter hellfire and other other people because of their good deeds will be declared fortunate and they will enter paradise and then about hellfire allah taala says that it will stay for a long time until your god will decide to bring it to an end and for paradise it's uh, allah taala says that those people who will be in paradise they will stay there in forever and it is a never ending gift so about hellfire allah taala says that it will eventually come to an end and for paradise allah taala says that it will stay forever and i explain that this is a diff- this is one of the differences between uh, that ahmadi muslims have uh, from non ahmadi muslims as well as from christians because both non ahmadi muslims and christians believe that hellfire would be permanent but uh, based on what the promised messiah allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam has written ahmadi muslims they believe that uh, the hellfire is not permanent it is temporary and everybody who will go to hellfire would receive uh, their due punishment and then eventually they will be taken out of the hellfire and everybody would then enter paradise so these are the subject matters that have been explained in uh, in in verse number 106 to 109 of surah hud chapter number 11 of the holy quran wa akhiru dawana anil hamdulillahi rabbil alamin